Hello, and welcome to a totally unscripted video. I'm going to be fixing up this LC520 that I picked up recently. It's in pretty good shape. The plastics aren't too brittle from what I could tell so far. Um, it's dirty. It's very dirty. Um, but I think there's going to be a little bit of a, you know, trash to treasure thing here. Uh, I'm not turning it on or anything. I want to open it up. I want to see what it looks like on the inside, what the analog book looks like, make sure the neck's not cracked, and it needs a good cleaning out on the inside kind of dirty in the back. It looks like it almost has like blood on it or something. It's kind of gross. Uh, I have already taken out the motherboard and taken out the battery. So you can see there, but yeah, let's uh, pull it apart and uh, give it more cleaning. Here's the motherboard out. A um, little dirty, not too bad though. Uh, this is a 68030 25 megahertz processor. So it's very much similar to a LC3. It's got a memory module in it, which is kind of cool. 16 megabytes and VRAM, extra VRAM. Yeah, so I like to use a uh, air compressor to blow off some of the dirt and crap. And then you can also use a nice clean paintbrush to kind of break it up. So let's just blow this thing off, see what we get. That's cleaned up pretty well. What do you think? Let's crack open the case and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, let's crack open this lid, top on this case. Jiggly jiggly. Uh-oh. Oh no, the front's cracked, the plastic's cracked. Oh no, look, what a shame. Mm. Yeah, what a shame, it's broken. It's broken here and it's broken on the other side. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. Uh, I think you can save it still. The main plastic case itself is in pretty good shape. Um, I think this can hold it all together, but it's gonna make it very difficult to work on this because um, this whole section here is what keeps the whole CRT connected to the bottom base. And if that's cracked like it is here, it's just willy nilly flailing around here in the wind. So yeah, this is gonna have to go delicate here. Not too horrible on the inside though, as far as dirt and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna try to clean this out, put the top back on and uh, so let's secure it so it doesn't crack completely apart. You can see inside the case too, there has been some water damage. Otherwise not terribly dirty, but certainly not clean. <laughs> so yay, I guess. Oh boy, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> okay, lower. All right, so the case went back on okay. And actually the front part is kind of secured by the back. So it's not horrible, but what's gonna make this really difficult to do is to try to clean this whole thing. Let's get this back inside though and see if we can test it, see if it turns on. Okay, back inside, let's give this thing a test. I have an external SCSI to SD hooked up so I can back up the hard drive just by some miracle this thing turns on. Um, I got an external power switch here, hit that first. I'm gonna turn on the display. Oh, high voltage, that's a good sign. Let's see if it'll turn on. Yay, it's booting. You can hear the hard drive spinning up. I'm trying to boot off the external S, it's got the SD now. There's the video. Okay, it's booting off the internal drive. Sincere apologies about the flickering. <laughs> okay, that is roly roly. All right, that should be a little better. It will still flicker, but better. We're gonna boot off the external SCSI SD and back up the internal drive. Okay, we're gonna use disk copy to back up the internal drive. Create image from disk. Select the built-in hard drive. We're gonna put it on our backup drive. Read only and go. Looks like it's an 80 megabyte hard drive. Oh, gotta cut in here because my friend John, the big bad biologist is doing a video right now, building a blue SCSI. Hey John, how you doing? <laughs> Excellent, the disk successfully imaged. That's now backed up. And uh, just in case there's anything good on it, I'll pick through it later. We're gonna test to see if the optical <laughs> drive works. I'm gonna pop in this Pro Pinball disc. This is a disc I found in some Mac years ago, so I always have to use it for a test disc. That's what you do. You find a disc in a Mac, you use it. Okay, we're gonna stick it in. This might be grindy, it might get stuck. Who knows? Let's see what happens here. Ejected okay, nope, just ejected. Try it one more time. Nope. Just adjust. So that tells me there's probably cap leakage on that. No big surprise. I wanted to show the front bezel on this. This is uh, one of the first Macs to have built-in optical drive, um, especially the first of this form factor. 
And on these early Macs, they used to put the sticker on here to show you all the features you'd get. You'd get compact disc, digital audio, QuickTime capability, photo CDs, blank, <laughs> and then 2X speed, 2X. And otherwise, the bezel on these I just love. I love the styling and stuff. Of course, this was taken off from the original Color Classic, the general styling. Got these clicky buttons for brightness up and down. You've got volume up and down, headphone out jack for kids to be able to listen to audio on it discreetly, and the badge. Let's try to get this front bezel off. The service manual suggests you jam a screwdriver up in here and then you just pull down on it. Now, of course, this is extremely brittle plastics probably, so we'll see what we can do. I, uh, you know, hope for the best. This is a tricky thing to do in the best of times. Oh, no, no way, it's already coming off. <laughs> nope, the clip's still on. Hmm. Let's try this tool. doing this <laughs> a few minutes later okay well that was not easy <laughs> as you can imagine you had to get this up in there and then really crank it to get it going but it slid out okay it looks like there goes a little bit of plastic <laughs> oh yes lovely oh god <laughs> so yeah there's a clip in here you've got to uh, get up in here and basically push this back, this let lip here, so it goes off of this. Okay, floppy drive is out. Here it is. Quite dirty and disgusting, but it was at a cost, of course, of blood. The case cut the heck out of my finger here. Nice sharp, sharp edge here. <laughs> Yay! And with some cajoling, I finally got the optical drive out. This is really stuck. I had to actually use like a screwdriver gently in here and the side just to kind of push it a little bit you know while lifting up the tab on each side a little bit around and delicately <laughs> brittle plastic oh boy yes the sled is still intact looks like this is a should be a cd 300i yep cdu 56125 all right back on the back side now let's plug the logic board and we'll get the hard drive out get that connector loosened Oh, gross. <laughs> Not bad. This has a little edge connector thing that slides in. I've got the back cover off, and I want to now take out the CRT and the whole bottom chassis as well as the analog board so I can properly clean the case. The trick, of course, is that I want to be careful not to destroy the plastics because they are apparently already pretty bad, as we can tell by the cracks and stuff. So let's hope this will work out all right. Right, got it all apart. All the pieces came apart okay. Nothing extra broke that wasn't already broken. This thing is, of course, separated from the uh, top half of the front part. You can see the inner bits are quite dirty and we'll give it a good cleanup. Some hot soapy water. And then I'll manually clean all the, uh, the other bits here and the rest of the analog board and stuff. Okay, time to wash all the case bits. I'm gonna just wash them in the sink here with some warm soapy water. And they can dry outside in the sun. The cases are outside and drying in the sun. Not very sunny today, though. Unfortunately, hopefully they get dry enough, but I think they'll do pretty well. Not too bad. Uh, cleaned up pretty nicely, so now we wait for the drying to happen. The floppy drive is extremely dirty, full of dust and hair and gunk. It's all jammed up. I ended up cleaning it up on Dave's Vintage Apple Tech Sunday stream. I'll put the link to it up in the corner if you want to watch that part, but it cleaned up really well, I think, and it works great now. Now we turn our focus to the logic board. This is going to need a recap. It should be pretty straightforward. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. There's just a minor bit of leakage. I'm going to use hot air to pull off the caps. Caps are all off. Uh, I need to now clean up all the pads and put some new caps on. Clean up these pads here. I'd like to add a little flux, clean the pad using some solder wick and my iron. Very good technique I learned from Bruce and Steve. Ooh, fishy. Looks good. Next I'll come back and clean the spot with a cotton bud and some alcohol. Make sure it's all clean so I can put down 
fresh soldering caps. Okay, now we're gonna put a cap on, add some solder, or uh, flux I should say. Put your cap on just right. Easy, add a little bit of solder to my iron. Hold the cap in place, solder it down. There you go, do the other side next. All the caps are now on the board. One little spot over here, I had some of the trace kind of got exposed, so I put some solder mask on it, let that cure. But yeah, after this, I'll get this into the ultrasonic cleaner. All right, the board is going into the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna do it 10 minutes on each side. I'll start with the uh, top down first. Okay, and let's do 10 minutes and full wave. Okay, all clean, looks pretty good. We're gonna be putting in some, a little bit of uh, spilled water here just to rinse off all the chemicals. All right, it's all clean, looks really good. After I take them out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, I like to use an air compressor to kind of blow out all the water that's trapped in between the chips and stuff. Just get the worst of it out and then air dry. See how it looks at the end. Warm sun, do your duty. All recapped and cleaned. Two 47 microfarad 16 volt caps, two 100 microfarad 6.3 volt caps, one 10 microfarad 16 volt cap, and the rest four are also 47 microfarad 16 volt caps. I think what we'll next do is assemble the case back enough so that I can slap this logic board into it and at least do a quick test to make sure that it's working. Um, still, analog board cleaned up pretty nice. Uh, yeah, the caps look good on it too. I'm not planning on uh, recapping this right now. I'm gonna leave it for later if I start seeing issues. Also, I'm not sure how good this is gonna be. Yeah, I'm not gonna have to spend the time on the analog board yet until I know I need to. Uh, CRT cleaned up really nice too. Uh, I'm not sure how tired this one's gonna be. It was really covered with a lot of uh, gunk and stuff, So, but it cleaned up pretty well. Let's try to get it back together so we can test the uh, logic board. All right, it's time to turn this on and see if the logic board works and the analog board still works and everything. Hit the power switch, see if we get high voltage. We do. Here we go. I think that's good. Let's see if we get video. Video's coming up. It's working. Yay. All right. <laughs> 20 megabytes of RAM. I think this has one megabyte. Yeah, it has one megabyte of VRAM, so it's all there. Looking good. Next, we have to tackle the optical drive. And here's a CD drive. It's a Caddy CD drive. It's an Apple CD300 2X. We found that it would inject the CD and eject it immediately um, without trying to read it or anything. Pretty common for these drives to need to be recapped. Hopefully there's not a ton of leakage on the board. I have another video where I disassemble and uh, service one of these, a similar drive to this, basically the same procedure. So I'll link that up um, either in the description or up in the corner here. Very cool, actually. The sled seems to be the good plastic. So far, so good. No obvious signs of major leakage yet. Let's flip this board over so we can see what it looks like on the component side. And let's put this under here. It looks pretty good, actually. Let's get this completely disconnected, though, so we can have a closer look. It's like some sort of bit of like gunk or something in here. It almost seems like gum. And here's the board. Looks pretty darn good, actually. Don't see much cap leakage. There's some sort of gunk here, like sticky or something. All right, let's get these caps off and replaced. So I got the caps off, but I wanted to show before I went any further that absolutely there was cap leakage. You can see it all over here. Definitely these need to be changed, but at least it wasn't spreading like as bad as I've seen in other cases. Board's all recapped. Came out fine, no major issues, really. So let's reassemble and test. All right, time to test the CD. We're gonna use a uh, LC475 here and just hooking it up to the internal bus. That way I can just quickly test it out without having to reinstall it in the system. All right, let's give it a test. We're gonna use this CD to test it and the caddy, of course. First, let's see if the drive shows up. Yes, perfect, there it is. Let's pop in the disc. Here's the drive accessing. Yep, hunting. Yay, all right, good, it's working. Let's see if we can copy off a file at least. Yes, Let's see if it projects okay. And it does, 
Super. The optical drive and floppy drive are installed once again. Now comes the fun part of trying to get the faceplate installed again. You want to make sure that these are working perfectly before reinstalling this, that we don't have to open it up again. Okay, got to line everything up and carefully slide it up. Oh my gosh, it just worked. It just worked. It worked. It's on. Wow. Well, that was awesome. <laughs> Yay! I think this restoration came out great. I'm super happy how well it cleaned up and everything's working perfectly. The optical drive works. The screen is nice and crisp. It's good quality. The only bummer of course was the crack in the plastic on the case here, but with the back part of the case on, it keeps it all together pretty sturdy and the rest of the plastics are actually pretty sound on this. Um, for the hard drive, I ended up using a blue SCSI instead of the original hard drive. I mounted the blue SCSI onto the bracket using double-sided tape. It's a little technique that Ron came up with using it for a uh, Performa 630 series on the optical drive bay, but I think it works great. So I like it. And uh, yeah, so thanks so much for watching it. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing and all that YouTube stuff. And we'll see you again. Bye.